Hi guys, Chuck Hamilton from Warbird Classic Alliance and my good buddy Rich Eggleston. I just say good buddy, I just said my brother, Rich Eggleston. Um, we're gonna hear, we're gonna talk a little bit about the P story, the P40 story, what the P40B story is. Uh, when Rich and I met many, many eons ago, I was flying a Pika P40. And Rich made a comment that he, he said, you like the P40? And I said, yeah, but it's the wrong model. It needs to be a B model. And that started the love story between Rich and I. A few years later, uh, Jerry Bates released a set of plans for an 80 inch. And I immediately bought them. And uh, like Rich and I do, we typically talk about projects. And uh, Rich goes, well, the big problem is going to be the spinner. Who's going to make the spinner? And Rich is a, a very talented individual that doesn't have a problem making molds, patterns, and all those things. And I said, well, funny thing he said about the, the spinner. So we rolled up the set of plans. We did some math. And I had a backup spinner that Gene Barton made for me for my Pika P40. And so we did the math, and Rich goes, it's going to be about 94 inches. That was kind of the story Rich and I get on to everything else. But then about, I don't know, about a year later, Rich calls me up one day and goes, guess what I'm building? A P40, a B model. And so you took the plans, you blew them up to the measurements. Do you remember what, that, what we blew them up to? Do you remember what that number was? Uh, was it like 108% or what was it? 116, 116, 120, something like that. Which happened to fall into that 94 inch Zeroli range. Right. Yeah. yeah. And obviously the love affair of this P40 is the shape of the nose. And I remember one thing you distinctly said, what was your one thing you wanted to do? I wanted to do the AVG. Yes. And the only way to do that correctly was to do a B model. And there was no B model available in that size, so I proceeded to invent it myself. So I blew up the Bates plans, made all the molds, pulled all the parts, and proceeded to build prototype number one, which is 48. Which is the aircraft number 40, which is Tex Hill. Right. Yep. Then I got some guys together and we decided that we would build four more so we could have a squadron. And over a five-year span, we built five airplanes. One there's is only, not here. There's only four here. There's another one existing somewhere else. But So we got them all together, and we've flown them together a couple times as a salute to the ABG of World War II. And we've had a lot of fun doing it. Let's back, up, great... let, let's back up a little bit. I remember when we got into this, and the measurements where we came from, you had a couple of two criteria. One was the engine had to be completely enclosed. Yeah. So that that was battle number one, yep. let's say. Okay? To find an engine that would work. Okay. We already had the spinner, which was a big challenge for us. I reached out to my friends at Robart and just happened to work that the Zeroli HD 150HD9s, yep. which is that Zeroli Hellcat gear, matched perfect. So that yep. was checklist done on that one. Um, and also, we had a target weight of about 30 to 31 pounds. Right. To, to make a successful airplane. Not just to fly once or whatever, but to last the test of time. That being said, how old are these things, Rich? Uh, the prototype is probably 15 years old now. Yeah. And after the prototype was proven, we, we, we you and I got together, and we yeah. kind of picked who the ABG squadron was going to be. Yeah. And we pooled all our resources from you know, I contacted Robart to get the gear, engines. I contacted Gene Spartan for the, spinner, for the spinners. And yep. we started pooling everything together, and we put together wood order. I don't even remember what the dollar number was that we kind of all threw into the kitty to do this. And, uh, but anyways, um, and that was kind of the, the spark plug. And bless his heart, over the course of, was about a year and a half, you framed, yeah. up, you framed them up? Yeah. I got them. Did, did I glass them and prime them? Or well, you, you, were glass getting, prime you were getting them like one or two at a time. Right. And then you were you were painting them. Yeah. We would build them and detail them, and then we would take them to you, and then you... No, I detail them. Detail them, yeah. and then you would paint them and yeah. weather them. Yeah, so I would get them. And one of the things that I was doing, because I was painting all of them and weathering and making all the details, like all the, the canopy lights, instrument panels, um, all the bumps, blisters, all that stuff, um, uh, the real P40s, after a little bit of research, they were painted by mats. 
meaning they would paint the airplane a basic color and they would, they would throw these rubber mats on top of it and they would spray the camouflage pattern. And so that's why on a, to do an authentic camouflage pattern, so what I did is I literally blew up a three view of the, of the camouflage pattern and they all are the same pattern and I cut rubber mats. And so these airplanes were actually painted um, with the rubber mat method as the full scale was. These are all latex. Um, uh, all latex, start to finish, clear coated, all that. Um, each pilot got to pick its own uh, P-40, I guess, squadron. Either right. Hells Angels, Panda yeah. Bear, and what was the other one? Um, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, yes. Sir. And I think all three are actually represented here. Uh, because 48 is a Panda Bear. Yes. Adam and Eve. Now, I'm, I'm the only Hell's Angel. Right. And there's, and there's 77 is Hell's Angel, and then Adam and Eve is seven. And there's only there's one. two Adam and Eve. Yes. There's only one that actually has the flying tiger symbol. Exactly. Yeah. Which was the last one, and that was was that Pappy Boynton? Was number seven? Was that Boynton? No, that was Robert Neely. Okay, you're right. You're correct. Robert Neely and Walt Disney actually made the yes. Tiger decal for the AVG. And they, yeah, there were actually decals at the time. Yes. If you notice when the guys put them on, then they would dope over them, and that's why you see like the discoloration or halo ring uh, around the flying tiger. Yeah. But uh, anyways, um, you know this is kind of one of those unique stories. And funny thing is, is uh, Jerry Bates, who designed this airplane on the 80 inch side, saw me at Top Gun because I brought this down as a backup airplane and he saw it and absolutely loved it and then he blew it up to the 1.35 scale is that what and that's currently what yeah, Brian O'Mara flying and, yep, and Michael one, Fetko one third is flying. Point five, I think yeah so uh, but what an amazing flying P40 yes yeah yeah um, I know you've flown some you've flown pretty much all the brands as long as I have like I have. we mentioned earlier my Pika which was near this size and why they did fly good but they're on a, on a B model P40, nothing fall flew as well as the B models. Well, nothing as far as the P40 design other than the baits. The, yeah. Jerry did an excellent, excellent job, job designing Absolutely. the airfoil and the the incidents. The flying characteristics of the airplane are just phenomenal. Outstanding. And that's why they're still here, right? Right. And we built five of them. Yep. Um, the they one, the one may or may not ever fly. It's kind of turned into a hanger queen for yes. a guy, and that's fine. He loves it and don't yeah. want to fly. And I, and, I, and, I, and I get that. But uh, we fly all these, and uh, we're going to fly them again today. And we just, you know, why we had the chance, you know, because um, it is such a unique story, and uh, that I wanted to tell this story. Uh, and so uh, with Andy's channel, and Rich was here. We're here at Owentana, uh, Minnesota, for their scale flying, uh, full disclosure. But... Uh, we had him here, we want to fly them together. Um, minus a number 77. Um, Jeff Quisenberry's is number five. Dave Zabo's 48. is 48. And you are flying 70, number, number seven. seven. Number seven. So uh, we're out here on a beautiful day. Um, but we just want to tell that story. Plus, you know, and Rich was the mastermind and brains behind it. Um, engines, let's talk a little bit quick about it. ZDZ60 in mine. Yeah. Um, what's in yours? 3W70. 70, which was the engine of choice when we started this yes, project. Because that's because it was the only engine that would fit. Um, ZDZ60, I know it is in yeah. JQ's. And Dave's got a 3W70 in his. As well. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and hopefully we get them up. Like I said, they're all latex painted, weathered, all that the stuff I typically do that you might see on some of my other stuff. But uh, what a great, fun project. And we just wanted to tell a story. Yep. It's
JQ's got his with a gear issue. They may have. They may have just locked. <laughs> Only JQ can get away with that. Jeff, hold that radio out. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> 